In Colorado, a father and son struggle. Hey! Move that lean back! To move this fragile homestead across a mountain. Ho, 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 ho! And in Illinois, three generations of movers shoulder the hopes of an entire town to save a Victorian masterpiece. Facing overwhelming odds, these crews risk everything to get the job done. Mega Movers, next on Modern Marvels. Aspen Park, Colorado. 8,500 feet up in the Rocky Mountains, this 1870s homestead with a log cabin and barn are endangered remnants of a bygone era. This part of Colorado has a very rich history going back thousands of years to the original Indian inhabitants and then to the early settlers and homesteaders and miners who lived here. The homestead's owner, Norm Meyer, has sold this piece of his property, but wants the buildings moved to save them from demolition. The cabin is 135 years old or so. It was uh, built in 1870. The barn was built around 1910 or so. The first owner of the cabin was John Lubin. John Lubin was a farmer and rancher who built his homestead along the original stagecoach route between Denver and the surrounding mining communities. John Lubin was described as a disagreeable person by his neighbors. Several members of the Lubin family died mysterious deaths. Those mysterious deaths have fed rumors that the buildings are haunted. No, it ain't sturdy. <laughs> well, of course it's not sturdy. That's why they called us to fix this. Yeah, it's it's years old. Rocky Mountain Structural Movers has been called in to get the job done. Its owner is Bill Davis. This is going to be tough. One thing we don't want this thing to do is once we start lifting, we don't want this wall to decide to just come on out on us. We're going to come Bill has been side. moving structures We're for over 30 down. years, including a 100-year-old train depot and a 1,500-ton bridge. I'm a third-generation house mover, which makes my son a fourth-generation house mover. He's pretty young right now, and he's going to college to get his structural engineering degree, and then we'll take it from there. We have our ups and downs, you know, because he has an idea about something, and I have an idea about it, and they kind of collide. So when we come in here with our cross beams, we'll do something in here as an added support so that this middle? building can't rack. I don't see any reason to go down the middle with it. The buildings will be moved to the other side of Norm's 130-acre property to be near his 1889 Victorian house, a former stagecoach depot and historical landmark. To do this, Bill is faced with the unique challenge of building a road across two miles of mountainside. We're looking for ruts, we're looking for rocks. Uh, we just want a smooth ride, especially with these fragile log homes like this. Contractor Brad Cranebring will use a bulldozer to cut a swath through several obstacles. First, they will have to navigate this steep descent. Oh. All right, well, here's our ascent, and I don't know, Brad, what do you think? This one, this one could be a little difficult in through here. As soon as we come down the hill, we'll make our turn, come around, and then start heading down this way here. Okay. Next, Bill will have to maneuver the barn underneath these dangerous high-voltage power lines and finally negotiate this sharp 90-degree turn onto a narrow road. Boy, I hope that's wide enough. We can get 32 foot through here if we grease the building. <laughs> Two days later, the dirt road is complete. We're getting ready to start on the barn. Everything's here, and we're ready to rock and roll this baby. It's time for Bill to build the iron framework to support the barn from underneath. Four 8-inch cross beams are inserted to support the outer walls, and two 20-inch main beams will support the entire structure and be attached to the wheels. The process is known as stabbing iron. Push! Well, right in. 
All right, I want you to go around, James, and look for weak points around this barn and, and start considering where you want a sandwich, okay? Okay. These hand-hewn timbers of Douglas fir and yellow pine were joined with saddle notch construction in 1910, a popular technique among early settlers. But 95 years of inclement weather has taken its toll. This is a failure point right through here. So what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich these logs to the inside wall. If we pick it up right now, if there's any rot all the way through, that they'll just snap in half and it could collapse the wall. James braces the wall by bolting a piece of plywood on the outside to a piece on the inside, creating a makeshift vise. He then takes wood shims to fill in the gaps. We don't want the logs to be able to close together. Whatever the gap is, we want to maintain that gap. So we just take different sizes of wood, just enough to wedge it in, pound it in, and that's good enough. 25 and 50 ton hydraulic jacks are set under the cross beams in order to finally lift the front of the barn. They call the procedure the pick. It is the first time these logs will move in almost 100 years. You know, just uh, being able to get underneath the, the logs and lift the building without any failures is a challenge in itself. There's a lot of variables that come into play, and if you don't take your time, take it easy, you can really mess something up. Doesn't get much prettier than that. These jacks are attached to the central pump, and Bill is ready for liftoff. Okay, man, we're ready for our pick. All right, here goes the first pick. Lift. It starts with one inch and it goes to two, ten, twelve, two feet, and that's the beginning of our lift. You just don't know what it's going to do yet, and it's not over yet. We still have the other side to lift. You don't know where the weak link is. There's got to be one somewhere, and we're trying to prepare for it. Next, it's time to lift the rear of the barn. Let's keep it shimmed off. Come on, you guys, get some shim moving here. Let's get that shimming underneath there. You guys ready to go up a little more? Still feeling brave? Oh, I think it's awesome. I'm amazed that it's going up in one piece yet. Fantastic. We've got significant lift here and control of the building, which is what we really want to see. And I think we're just going to be fine here. Next on Mega Movers, crisis hits in Colorado. Hey! Damn it! Move that f***ing beam back! A 120-year-old building is on the verge of tumbling to the ground. Oh, 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 oh. Well, the Lubin family was living here in 1881, trying to scratch out a living up here in the mountains, which was somewhat difficult because of the climate and the isolation. Six people cooped up in a little cabin all winter with no entertainment and relatively isolated off by themselves. No one knows if it was cabin fever, but four members of the Lubin family died mysteriously. Their spirits may still haunt this homestead. The crew of Rocky Mountain Structural Movers hopes they're not haunting the move. The crew's first task is to place the large 22-inch main beams underneath the barn. These beams weigh 7,000 pounds apiece, and one wrong move when manipulating this extreme weight could be deadly. Shay! What? Bring that in back! The level intensity is up right now. We've kicked it up a notch in, and we're getting ready to load this thing on wheels. And the intensity will stay like this until we're at the other end. Hey! Damn it! Hey! Move that beam back! Move it back! My dad gets all huffy, you know, because this is really dangerous, you know, and I understand, but sometimes it gets taken out on me because I'm the youngest, you know. Lower it down. 
The main beams are inserted below the cross beams, providing support for the entire load. The main beams are chained together to keep them from spreading apart. If the beams and everything's placed straight, my wheels will be straight, and I'll be able to go straight down the road. If I put my beams crooked, then I'll be going crooked down the road. Let's get them jack set. I want this on the wheels in an hour. Well, we got to get up high enough to up to the truck and put the wheels under it, whatever that is. A couple feet. Without warning, the barn tilts to one side. Oh, 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 oh! Why'd that tip like that? Was one end higher than the other back here? It just slid on the top of the jacks. Okay, but was one end higher than the other? I thought it was a tiny height. I think you're higher over on that end, and that's why it came at us. Okay, we need to keep everything real level Not here, good. okay? Yeah, it was pretty scary. I was putting that crib in, and right then is when it flipped over towards me. You just got to always expect something. Once the barn is high enough, a crossbar is secured to the main beams in order to attach the truck. Okay, set it down. Outside, James secures the front of the building with seven-strand quarter-inch tether cable. The building, as it comes downhill, this whole building is on the one to fall over. That's uh, 60, maybe 70,000 pounds leaning. We're going to secure this whole thing in the big giant X's, and I think we can hold her up. Yeah, well, we've got some rain, we've got some precipitation, the grass is wet. I think we better do this thing first thing in the morning. Bill calls it quits for the day, but the barn is ready to move. It's later that night. Norm Meyer Jr. has lived in the cabin for 30 years and has experienced several disturbing noises. It sounded like a baseball bat hitting a railroad rail, something like that. Okay. He has called in a paranormal investigator to rid the homestead of unwanted entities he feels were brought on by the four unexplained deaths. Hello? Is anyone here? The buildings here are going to leave. The house is leaving. The barn is leaving. You can't go with them. You can't follow the people who move it. It's day four in Colorado. An incoming snow front has turned this move into a race against time. Here we go. 100 years of haunted history begins its perilous journey. Average speed is measured not in miles, but in mere feet per hour. Sounds a little creaky, but what do you expect for 100 years old? It's all good. Bill approaches the steep hill. It could prove to be a barn killer. This descent is so steep, the two-yard loader is attached to act as a brake and prevent the barn from falling forward. You saw the speed I was going, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's the speed we're going to maintain down this hill. It's just in low gear. Letting the tranny work. I got a little bit of brake going. You just keep tension on the chain. We're dragging a little bit on this beam. It's the sound of something wrong. I don't like the way it's leaning.
45 tons of shifting weight has proven to be too much, snapping one of the internal tension cables. The barn has tilted to one side. So this is fine. It's just the top racked over a little bit, coming through the trees, I believe. We're tightened there, James? Yeah, the whole building's leaning that way. Yeah. They spend an hour tightening the remaining cables and re-welding the cross beams to the main beams. All right. Yeah, leave it like that. All right. Meanwhile, Bill wants to double check a dangerous situation up ahead with these high voltage wires. My building's at 27.6. I need a little bit of clearance. We got a metal roof. We're hotter than a pistol up there. So we just got to make sure we don't have any incident. So there's my lowest wire. We just broke 28 feet. Just about 29 feet, looks like a green light. We're gonna go. they must make a tight 90 degree turn onto a very narrow road. Woo! The truck loses traction and they're stuck. The crew must attach the loader to haul them through the turn. Okay, you have it. Now nice and easy. All right, let's go. Come on, Jason. Once through, it's still a very tight squeeze. Adding to the challenges, freezing rain now begins to fall. The barn makes its final approach to its ultimate resting place. A grove of aspens and evergreens at the base of the Rockies. Nice job, man. Thanks, Steve. The hundred-year-old barn is delivered. But Bill's job isn't over yet. He still has another building to move. Coming up, moving the 130-year-old cabin presents its own challenges. Slow, 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 slow! And becomes a fight against nature. The barn has been moved from the Colorado homestead, but the 130-year-old cabin remains. The cabin was built in 1870 along an old stagecoach route using rare full dovetail notch construction. But it may face the wrecking ball if they can't move it before an incoming snow front arrives. We're going to have snow by tomorrow, they're saying, but uh, as long as we've got daylight, we're going to continue. The first job is to pull through the two 22-inch main beams. The cabin was constructed with a reinforced floor structure that supports the outer walls, so no cross beams are needed. Because they will bear the weight of the entire cabin, it is imperative to get the two main beams completely straight. Come on up. Watch your feet on this. Oh! Oh, geez! You know where your brakes are? Back. Come, come down just a little, James. No. Down, damn. Down. Oh, all right, shim it off. Lay on around. I want this side against it tight. Okay. With the beams finally secure, it's time to get the wheels in place and attach the rig. The next step is to lift the 30 ton cabin from its foundation. Crib piles are built as platforms to support the jacks. Make sure it's even. Pop. Dead. It's not centered under the house where it should be. It's sitting off by about that far. What are you talking about, Shane? The beam. And when it's coming out the back, it's not sitting on the mark. You guys f***ing busting my f***ing Son of a bitch, man. Bill is frustrated. It's getting colder and they are losing light. He decides to call it a day. Let's load those jacks up. We're done for the night. 
I want to wrap everything up, and then tomorrow we'll put it on the wheels and we'll take it out of here. Okay, we're safe downstairs. Jack's okay. coming down. Great. The next morning doesn't bring snow, but plenty of rain and mud, making the move even more challenging. It just slows us down, and it takes twice as long, and then everybody gets cold and miserable. So we want to be fairly aggressive and get this over with. With the cabin jacked up and the truck in place, Bill is ready for the next step. We're hooked to the truck, and we want to set the back end on the skates, which are these guys here. We're going to set several of them underneath each beam, and then we're going to drive the truck forward, rolling on these skates. And we're trying to roll out from off of this hole here until we get out far enough so that we can set it on wheels. The crew must risk working underneath a century-old structure that weighs almost 30 tons. No more! Make sure you're straight! Let's go, James! The pressure is released in the jacks to lower the cabin onto the skates. Yeah, That's that nice. Like and it is ready to roll. Moment of truth. Start pulling this beam, it's gonna roll on these skates. We're gonna get this thing off the foundation. Skates. They're, they're fine. Good? They're tracking fine. Okay, nice and easy. Yeah. How about three miles an hour, not 30? Slow, 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 slow. 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 He's okay, right there. Right there is good. Yep, and look, we're past there. Okay, sure down. Let's reset. Cautiously, Bill pulls forward again. and the crew attaches the wheels to the main beams. Keep going. Keep going. All right, make sure your wheels are straight with the building. The mud is making things difficult. Bill needs the loader to pull the rig up the hill. With every perilous inch, Bill risks losing traction and getting stuck in the mud. The incoming fog doesn't help. The cabin comes to the steep hill that almost spelled doom for the barn, and this time the road is in worse shape. With the loader acting as a brake, Bill again braves the 30-degree descent. With a 45-ton load, the rig could lose traction, slide off the road, and endanger Bill's life. The loader attached to pull out front, the cabin makes the final haul towards its new home. Just ahead of the winter that threatened its survival. The cabin settles to a stop 100 yards from the barn. Nearby sits Norm's landmark 1889 home, completing his own collection of Colorado history. It's a big relief to have this over. Sometimes you just gotta push until there's no pushing anymore. And we pushed it to that point and we didn't have to stop. We got all the way. As the Colorado move finishes, a thousand miles away in Bloomington, Illinois, work is about to begin on this 1894 Queen Anne Victorian mansion. We're gonna put some dollies and stuff on it. Start loading our dollies. Ken Bologna and his crew of Bologna House Moving have been hired for the job. This compound of work sheds, timber and steel is the home base they call Bolognaville. This is Bolognaville. This has mainly just been our yard. So my, my dad was here. Uh, then it's my Aunt Jean. Then Charles Jr. lives here. Then it's my Aunt B. It's Bolognaville for here for about two miles. Ken is a third-generation house mover, a trade passed down from his grandfather. I took it over in about 1982. My dad said, hey, you either jump in and run this thing or we're going to get out of business. I started thinking, well, 
Let's give it a whirl. Ken runs the business under the watchful eye of his father, Fred. I'm very proud of what he has learned from the game, and now he's teaching me. Ken's crew also includes his uncle Chuck, cousin Frank, second cousin Josh, and best friend Bruce. The Bolognas have one week to move this mansion five blocks through the city of Bloomington. The most elaborate style of the Victorian era, Queen Anne homes are becoming extremely rare. Built in 1894 for local entrepreneur and philanthropist Oscar Mandel, the home was the work of renowned American architect George Miller. It's among the one top one percent of houses ever built in our community. It represents the finest kind of craftsmanship, and this is a very well-preserved example of his work. The church next door has purchased the property on which the house sits in order to construct a new annex. To prevent the destruction of this important part of their heritage, the community has raised the money to move the house into the Grove Street Historic District near other George Miller designed homes. I'm putting my name, reputation on the line again as you do every time you step on the road. Then all eyes are on us, as they usually are. The crew's first task is to unload these giant main beams and maneuver them through the foundation. Our main steel is the basis of our carrying structure. They weigh about seven ton apiece. They're 16 by 16, and they're 62 foot long. This is the main piece of the puzzle, a A number one piece. Underneath the house, Frank keeps the beams on a straight course. You try to get you know close as you can possible because these beams are heavy and are hard to handle. The key is constant communication. Come great, buddy. Come on, great. Straight in, Kim. Something the family prides itself on. We just spend so much time together. You know, you just know what's going to happen. We never do anything unless everybody's clear on everything. Now, Bruce, hold it there. Hold on just a minute. Oh, come on down, Jack. Everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Coming to you, Chief. Coming, Ice. Got 10 feet to center. We've been with it so many years, we just know what each other's thinking and what's going on. That's just the way it got to be. It's good, Bruce. Hey, Bruce, we're outside. That's it. That's it. Next on Mega Movers, Ken discovers if he can lift 180 tons. Doing nice. We're working right out at the edge of our capacity. Don't tell my son I said that. Day two, what we're up to here is figuring out exactly where our cross steel will go through and hope to, uh, by process of illumination, catch all the brick off and start to pick it up off the uh, foundation today. The massive size of the house requires that 10 cross beams be inserted between the main beams and the floor joists of the house, creating a web of steel that will support up to 200 tons. The bulk of the cross steel will go under the front two-thirds of the house, where the weight of the two large chimneys and brick facade are concentrated. Five blocks away, concrete footings are poured for a new foundation that will be built to support the weight of the house. But to get the cross beams through the old foundation, the crew must knock a few holes. Underneath this massive structure, one wrong move could be very dangerous. You had to be real careful as to what brick we take out. For long, there's not going to be a whole lot holding this house up. Okay, it's up now, young man. With the holes in place, the team is ready to insert the cross steel. Smaller pieces of steel, known as needles, are inserted perpendicular to the cross beams. Like the cross beams, the needles will be concentrated toward the front of the house to support the majority of the weight. These are our small beams that transverse the weight to our cross beams. If you got a 180 ton structure and you're catching it in two places, those two places are going to have an immense amount of weight on them. What we're actually doing is spreading our weight out. If you start counting the areas that we're catching, it's really going to start to add up. 13 15 ton jacks are set under the two main beams for the pick. As we pick, we'll ease into this to determine which corner is heavy and which corner is lighter, and hopefully everything will spring off at the same time. You got her now. The crew uses measuring tape to determine if any part of the massive house isn't keeping up with the rest. I'm up an inch. You don't want one corner lagging behind or you'll cause some damage to your house. That's why we're measuring. 110 years of history is lifted, along with 180 tons of brick, steel, plaster, and wood. Four inches, Frank. Five. 
Five, yes, good. Seven. Eight and a half. Yes. I got ten. Ken assesses the weight of the house by totaling the pressure on each jack. That's good. Good. It's in the air. We know what it weighs now. 90 ton to a side, 90 ton on the other side. We're a little heavy on the far corner. Uh, that makes us right at about 180 ton. I'm a little concerned about this job because of its magnitude. We're working right out at the edge of our capacity. Don't tell my son I said that. Because nothing's too big for him. That's a father speaking. You do the best you can, and hopefully fortune's on your side. We're going to continue raising our house up another two feet. That'll allow us at enough elevation to roll it out and put it right on dollies. Slowly, Ken raises the house another two feet. The higher the jacks extend, the more likely they are to fail, making this pick one of the most dangerous procedures of the move. Got 10. 12. 16. The goal of two feet is achieved. The next step for the Bologna crew is to get the house onto these dollies. The house will be lowered onto skates and slide 60 feet along rails until it's over the dollies. First, the three skate rails are installed. Good. Next, the crew places the dollies in position. This is kind of a crucial point because we don't want to have to move two feet and jack up to reset a dolly. If one of these dollies get it out of kelter, it'll want to roll up or roll out from underneath of it, just like a big roller skate. Oh, yeah, we're back too far with this one. Placed up underneath the bulk of the house's weight, the two front dollies are state-of-the-art hydraulic power dollies propelled by a central pump. Got it. This is our propulsion unit. This is what's going to provide our mojo to take it down the road. When we're ready to move, we'll hook the hoses up to it, throw that joystick, and away we go. Finally, the skates are put under the main beams. With everything in place, the pressure in the jacks is released. 180 tons comes to rest on the skates. What's that? It's a sound the crew never gets used to. When you got that kind of weight coming down, you know, you end up setting it on wood piles. No matter how rigid our steel is, you're still going to get some popping and cracking. The next day begins with a momentous and dangerous task. They will attempt to slide this 360,000 pound historic building 60 feet onto the dollies. Hey, hold up, guys. I got to do something. Hold up, minute. Hold up just a minute, guys. One of the skates is off center. Everybody's drifting over a little bit. You see this roller's drifting off. We haven't got our pull quite right. I think this end's coming just a little bit faster. We just don't want to get off the side of those rails too awful much. Ken uses the hydraulic jack within the power dollies to lift the house off the skate and get it recentered. We can't be perfectionists all the time. The house completes the first step of its journey. As the final task for the day, the dollies are clamped onto the beams. Now it's all sitting on rubber tired dollies and hydraulics. We're ready to take it down the road. Next on Mega Movers. Will the 180-ton house survive the perilous journey to its new home? It's day five, two days before the big move. The house needs to be rotated 180 degrees to point it on the designated route. We'll just take our time and ease it on out here. Let's give her a whirl, let's make it happen. are anxious 
switches to make it roll. The crew uses devices called come-alongs to steer the dollies. One end of a chain is attached to a fixed point on the beam, the other to the tongue of the dolly. A central ratchet is used to shorten the chain, pulling on the tongue and turning the dolly. I got my dad out front. He likes to be out front and calling some of the shots. It, and he's good at it. He knows what to look for. All I got to do is raise my finger and whirl it a little bit, and I think that's just about all this old man can handle. With the house fully turned around, the next task is to prepare the arrival site five blocks away. The concrete footings have been poured, and now wood cribbing is stacked to create two ramps that will need to support the 180-ton structure. Later, a brick foundation will be built up underneath it. These crib piles are real important. It doesn't look like much now, but when you get that great big house sitting over top of them, it'll mean a lot. The one thing I'm nervous about, I wish Monday was tomorrow, Get it over with, maybe. Then I'll be happy. Monday morning, move day, and the town is ready for a show. I think it is fabulous. I think that this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in my lifetime. Well, that's the biggest thing that happened in Bloomington for a long time. <laughs> that's incredible, really. Moving a house of this magnitude requires the combined coordination of the power, telephone, cable companies, public parks, and the local police. There's some excitement and people love to see it. It's very unique. And we want to make sure the vehicles and people are safely at a distance. Today, the team will include several extra hands, including Ken's 11-year-old son, Luke. Hey, I'm tickled to death. That's the third generation or fourth generation now. I want to thank everybody for coming and giving me a hand on this move here today. We're going to try and refrain from yelling. So if there's a question, just go stop, get me, and we'll go take a look at it. Let's get it going and make her mobile. The house approaches its first difficult maneuver, a tight 90-degree turn. To see that come right at you, practically, it's exciting. Cribbing is set down to ease the grade, but the crew cannot proceed. Hey guys, I need you over here. The city foresters are called in. Now basically wait for the house to get close, see what needs to be cleared. If you know, needs to be cleared, we'll cut it back. So we just don't want to tear the roof clear off the house, uh, getting us a little clearance. Cautiously, the crew proceeds forward with only one objective. Turn, baby, turn. And what we're trying to do is get the dolly up underneath the load, cranking on the come along. When you're setting up on all these dollies, it just takes a little more to steer them and work them around. And everybody laughs when you say, what do you need 14 guys for? I think every one of them is busy right now. Okay. Once the house hits the street, the crowd is treated to a parade unlike any they've ever seen. company is on hand to drop lines and remove light poles for a clear path. Move on down that way. Keep going that way, out of the way. The house makes its final turn, only to face the greatest challenge of the day. The house must be guided along these two ramps of cribbing to sit over the foundation. All we've got to do is straight ahead. And now lineup becomes critical, so now it's just a matter of steering the dollies in. Making sure our cribs are up. And this is where our eight hours in that hole the other day is really going to pay off. Does everybody want to keep a safety now, safety block? It's a perilous final step. Where every inch counts, the house could slip off the side of the cribbing, so everyone must be in absolute sync. 
in a sense, you trust these guys with your life. Everybody protects everybody. Else. Everybody watches everybody's back, I should say. Okay, looks like I need to maybe come this way a little. I'm a worrier. We're getting off a post right back there. This is a little bit different moving than my dad's used to. He gets a little uncomfortable. He's got his whole family underneath there, and if something would go wrong, he'd probably take some of us with it. But things go well, they go well, and they went well here. I think everybody's kind of admired it, and I do too. It's important that we preserve our history. We've got to leave something for, for our kids to look at. Uh, this is important. To house movers like Bill Davis and Ken Bologna, the sense of accomplishment comes from not only saving a piece of history, but doing it alongside family. It means everything to me. The support I got empowers me to do what I do. Everything you've done worked out. Find something that you'd like to do and be proud of it. We're proud of it, proud of our heritage, and my grandfather would be proud today. He would.